Okay, so now we are at Living Anatomy with the Ear, part part two with the ear. And now we're going to do about three studies, three or four studies here from observation, or from an image actually. Um, it's always good to get it from observation when you can, but if you need an image, go for it uh, too. So um, <clears throat> let's now pop the first image up, and we have a... Uh, pretty much a straight on normative view of the ear. What I like about this one now that we're doing as opposed to the ones we did in uh, Anatomy 1 was now you can see the um, the ear canal uh, pretty pretty cleanly here since we have a straight on view. The reason why I didn't give this one the first time in my in my um, diagrams when I just drew out of my head is that this view can be a little flatter and most people draw this view of the ear more than more than uh, not, and it is a little flatter. And I wanted to show the really the three-dimensional box-like kind of quality of the ear. And then, of course, it's a question mark or it's a C, or a C shape. So let's go ahead and start in here with the ear. We'll do three three per page here on this sheet of paper. And I'm using polychromos pencils, black, the red, the black, and and the the white here. So, but you can use any materials that uh, you have available. To you. So we're looking at this particular ear. The first thing that strikes me about the ear is its relatively normative shape is that, remember when I talked about it being on a slight angle with the lobe first? Well, there's always exceptions to that rule. This one is relatively straight. So what I'm going to show you here is what I mean. Notice that the lobe is about the same part as the helix up at the top. So that makes it really easy for us in a way, although you see this less often. So the first thing we're going to tackle here is make sure we get that, that kind of feeling of this question mark shape. It's the, the actual left ear uh, attached, obviously, to the head. Looks like it's female here. And we're going to get this feeling of the, of the uh, shape of the ear coming down, very two-dimensional in this kind of sense, first of all, bringing down that, the, uh, the, the helix, outside helix part of that. Remember, the whole thing is the pinna, so we have that. Then we're going to bring down the lobe in through here, this part of that lobule. And then we're going to come back up and then attach it back to the uh, facial skin here, to the side over here by the jaw, the mandible attaches right in through here. So it's detached a little from the, uh, the the lobe itself. It's hanging. It's got a little extra there. Some are attached down in through here. So here we have it attached there. So we'll bring that up. Here, make sure in the camera, I'll bring it a little bit lower. There we go. That would help. <clears throat> we don't want to draw and then you can't see it. That's not good. So we have that. We'll bring the the helix part down the outer part in through here. Notice that it begins to attach down and through here. We'll see how it wants to turn back in here, right? And keep on coming back into the anti-helix over here. So it keeps on coming down and through here, but it gets a little bit less tube-like. So we come around and you can see where that tube starts about right in through here, right? And it gets a little narrower where that, uh, the helix is in through here. And this, this part now, see this darker part where the hair starts to come over? It gets a little darker in through there. And you get a little shadow, and then of course the, the, the blonde hair starts to come over a little bit. We can kind of just indicate that through there. A little bit of tongue back in through, back in through here and on over. And we start to see that happen. Now, again, the straighter quality from the, the outer part of the pinna, the, and now the helix part in through here, and that's pretty much straight down as we get over in through here. Then we have a little bit of the, the, um, the outer core now of the auditory, uh, external auditory canal, or the ear canal, right in through here. See how it's pushed in a little bit, roughly right in through here. And we get a deep part of it. And notice how it's protected by the tragus and directed. So sound waves and sound is directed into the ear, ear the outer ear canal. This feels like kind of like a donut shape or a whirl coming on in. So we have to be careful there. And then it then it kind of fades over here. We have this turning in a little bit further. So we have a little bit darker line. It's not that deep though. And then this fades up a little bit, and see how it fades up in through here. 
it's not quite as, as rounded. Then it gets a little firmer in through here. Then we come around this, this, this kind of donut ridged form has a little bit of an extra uh, uh, quality that's a little flatter, it's round and it kind of flattens off a little bit, but it still turns around. And then as it falls, it falls into the auditory canal, the ear, the ear canal, and it gets on down into the inner ear to the eardrum. And so that's a little bit, now it's quite, it's circular in feel, but you can tell it's a different shape. This part right in here is it curves over. See where the curves right in through here turns in, that's the tragus. And that's directing sound waves downward and then back into the, the auditory canal and through here because we're still on the outside. And then we'll come down and catch right in through here the low, maybe a little bit longer, maybe it attaches actually about a little bit lower, about right in through there. We have that. That's where it attaches. Comes back to the cheekbone, the mandible, and then we have that low coming down. So let me a little, just a little bit, a little bit lower just fine coming on up and then of course we have the lobe in through here and you can tell right in through here where it gets that thicker part I'll start to show it with some contour line you can see that it turns turning this way and then back and then back around of course we have the, the distinctive shape of the lobe kind of teardropish bottom teardrop into here turns in and then we start to get a little bit wider and we'll start to go up the outer edge of the helix and there I'll leave that for a moment we'll start to work on this this bottom area now of the ear her ear in through here of course we have hair back in through here back in through the mastoid process in the back here and then of course hair comes out and then just keep on coming down falls out a little bit like like so so now let's go for the, the more of the tragus in through here as it turns in, kind of has a bulb or a head. This is pretty firm cartilage, folks. It really is strong in through here. And it turns a little bit, kind of like a head on its own in through here. And then you can see where this gets the secondary ridge kind of comes up here. And we'll start to delineate that with some more tone in through there. And you get this outer edge with a stronger line. It's not too hard, but it's Got a little bit of a, a harder, hard enough line because it, it kind of curves over gently enough in through here. So it's all this is curving and curving, curving over this way. <clears throat> so you got to feel the, you have to have the sensibility of form and roundness of form. That's what you want to hear. It's not flat, even though this is starting out of shape, right? And it's also kind of a question mark shape as well. Her helix gets a little higher up in through here then it starts to turn downward so it's really kind of a classic I guess a very normal looking ear if that's even possible to say because we have all different uh, gender types and ethnicities so it's really not that proper to say I suppose but it looks like just a regular ear to me <clears throat> then we have the so we have the tragus we have the external auditory canal going into to the inside, the inner ear, the middle and uh, inner deep ear, to the eardrum, right? <clears throat> nice and dark, so you can see that's dark in there where it just starts to, no light can get in the cavity, natural cavity, and this has a little divot through here underneath, and this kind of goes under like, like so. Uh, and then we will come on over here to the, now the anti -tragus. so as we come back up, we have a different view, so compare what you did with ear anatomy one, right? And my diagrams out of our imagination, and then there you go, you see the anti tragus here, it kind of comes on up. Everything is directed, these, these whirls and crevasses and recesses are directed to get sound waves into this auditory, external auditory. Uh, meatus area. So we come up with the anti tragus in through here and kind of comes around and down and over. Then we're going to get through here and I'll start, you'll start to see the shape and this will get us up and over. Look into the anti helix start of it and look how it comes really close to the helix edge over through here. So this is a very strong divot. Now what I'm drawing here is where the curve 
of these two tubes. So you have to think of these really as tubes. So they tube down and they curl and they curl underneath and they, they have a little canal in between them and there's a little bit of a flat space in there and, they can, and then they come together. So it's very much, uh, you get a dark in there because of that. So you have to be careful. They don't just come together, they have a flat space and that's dark. So uh, we come here now to the end of the antihelix all the way down and through here and then we'll get a little bit of turning, turning here. This will turn over here, turn down, right, coming through. <clears throat> and the uh, anti-helix coming all the way down. There was that Y shape, and we'll get to that in a moment. And we'll get to this flat part, and then it's so deep within there that it gets darker. You can tell that. Push a, push a real nice darker too, deep, deep within there to get that. Then we get this kind of end of all the helix and the anti-helix and the kind of the head of the lobe you can tell right in through here as it comes through and downward and this pushes over and this might even go a little this might droop a little further with uh, the gravity just a touch more right in through maybe here there we go so that might droop a little bit further this is the bottom back of the the head here underneath there's space and distance between that ear and the lobe and obviously where where her um, her cheekbone and the earlobe and the back of the earlobe is and then we get a little bit of a a little pock in through here of course the earring could go in this particular area so we've got that now so we've got the external auditory meatus or the canal the ear canal we have the now that you can see the tragus now here right and we can say that this is turning in gradually and kind of actually box boxes off a little bit you can see this little cast shadow that gives you that so that kind of boxes off and I'll try to make that clear with some contour contour line and then we have this distinctive anti tragus coming back on the opposite side directing it back up and over and it has the same kind of shape but just on the other side kind of has a head to it here this, this continues to contour this way, right? See that? And that comes down and over. And then we get into the lo lowest part of the Y shape of the anti-helix. So this could now come on over a little bit further and then come on down like so. And it's a deeper dark here because it's a real strong cylindrical tube and it's got a flat space in between it and the rest of the helix on the, on the other side over here. So we can say, well, okay, that's a flat space. And then it gets a little, there's a deeper part of it. It goes a little bit darker. So we put a little darker, dark part of through there. And then we'll curl back around here. And then we'll adjust the shape. This gets a little bit wider. Always adjusting a little bit. And we're kind of ready to go up to uh, the other part now. So if we keep going up here, we'll kind of meet these two. We'll start here with the helix. And remember, these are rounded tube-like forms, and the whole thing is a box because it has a top. We don't see the top of the very bottom. If we saw up underneath, we have to you know, keep that in mind. But it is kind of a, a really a box form, and then we cut it into, in this case, a um, kind of a question question mark shape. So now we come over and we have the um, the helix part ending over here it wants to keep on coming down some after here and redirect down and back this way so it's coming back this way while the attachment over here is about right here it's a little extra skin fold you can kind of just gradually see it there and that wants to pull us back into to that direction all right so we have here coming up with the ear and we just really pay attention to what the model is giving us, what, what the shape of all that is. So we have this coming over. It gets, doesn't get pointy, but it does top out a little bit right about in there. And then it flattens out slightly. And then it comes on over here. And then, of course, all the way on down. Not too terribly difficult, I think, to draw. Now this turns. Remember, this is turning, 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 contouring around. Then it comes over the top over here of the helix, comes on over. These are whirls and recesses. They have other names in through here, but I'm not as interested in, in um, 
uh, giving you all those names. I think we've got enough terminology that is enough for our, our purposes. I think that's also important to realize. So we have that, and then this comes on down, this rhythm in through here, part of its rhythm. We see that coming over through here, coming on over, gets fattier. You can tell it gets thicker, you have to pay attention to that. Then it kind of folds. You can see where this flattens out just a little bit here. See how this turns over, turns over, turns over, then it flattens a little bit. Then we see this <clears throat> here fold, increase, and come underneath a little bit, and this gets really fat, fat enough for the ear, and, and then it starts to, we get that same kind of turning right, contouring around, and we pay attention to the shape, it flattens out, the line of it flattens out and gets down to about right, oh, here, I'd say right in through there, so we get some extra nice, you know, line, line manipulation. You're drawing what you see and what you know, you're combining the two together here, so we get that, <clears throat> and then we're going to go ahead and, and continue on with the helix and bring it on down to, to its conclusion where we had it before. And so you get a pretty strong dark in through here, don't you? Right in through here. Notice that you have to be careful that it's a flat space. These are turning and ending before they reach each other a little bit, and then you get this space in between with some darker areas. That's why this is a little bit darker. That that's, you know, it's not much light is getting, really getting in there, so you have to be a little bit careful. So they're fairly hard edged, but since they s slope and turn, they're, they're a little bit, they have a little bit of a softness, softness to that as well. And so I put a little dark right here on the, the, ear, can, the ear canal or the external auditory meatus in through here to give it that cut in feeling that we want. It's really deep in through there. Of course, all this turns this turns back in on itself a little bit. We'll get that in a moment. So, <clears throat> finishing up over here as we connect, see how this gets a little bit curved in, and it gets a little straight, but not for much here, and then it connects up a little darker right in through there. Now, notice where this highlight is. That's kind of the highest ridge of the turn of the cylinder, and then it gets uh, a little darker on the edge and through here, so we can put a little darker. This hair is coming back behind it and through here, and then the ear wants to turn away always from the hair, get a little bit narrower and thin, curl, curl out, and you can see where this lighter area of the ear, this is the apex of the turn, and then all this is turning in and away from us, and of course gets in in the shadow, and of course it has a core shadow and all that good stuff. And here I'm not going to go into a full shading. We'd be here for a long time. But we get the um, an anatomical understanding of the ear and three-dimensionality. All right, so we have that. Now the major other part here is to get the anti-helix. Remember, that's kind of this Y shape up above, and it's going to have different looking uh, parameters for each each ear that you you draw and so to get this Y shape the top part of the Y we kind of have this down and through here this kind of curve underneath here as we sketch it out and this has this little minor kind of uh, feeling here where the edge of it is and through here so it kind of turns in through here then it starts to have this nice rhythm that comes all the way down Notice that it comes all the way over and gets down and around and gets to the anti-tragus all the way across and over to here, which is pretty cool. Get that coming through down and through there. We can give this a little bit more of a contouring tone just to pull that in and around there. So it's lovely we get that. So we have this nice, uh, really movement in rhythm, it's important to see in through there. <clears throat> then we come over, and as you see where the the uh, anti helix down in through here meets the helix, it kind of starts to come up, and then gets wants to get wider and kind of gradually move to a slightly flatter plane, right as it comes down in through here, right, and it's turning. It's still kind of cylindrical like in there, okay. 
and then it comes up through here. This is the bulb of the head of the, the ridge of the of the cylinder part of the anti-helix running through here. Then it comes on, this is where it flattens a little bit, and you can see where it's in light too as well. It turns up and then it has a, a ridge. We get some cast shadow and also some form changes in through here. This comes in, divots downward, and then we get this kind of sort of classic, uh, more Y shape here. Let me really carve into this ear ridge here and here as it turns down. That's gonna be important to see. And then we kind of, we come up here with the ear canal, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the helix and the anti-helix here. We have this whirl and recess here. And this will turn in. And so above the tragus, we have coming in through here, this kind of shape coming through and over, kind of curving around. Notice how this is all turning in like so and then it comes over, turns down like so. So the direction of the stroking of the mark making is going to be important. This turns, this wants to turn in and inside and down and around and over through here. Okay. <clears throat> and then we have where we have the bottom of the anti-helix over through here. This shape, this gets a little interesting turn in through here. We just follow that linear kind of rhythm. It kind of has a sort of a anvil kind of approach to it. This gets turned underneath and this wants to come around like so. There we go. And over. And then we have this area here. And this is all pushed pushed more in shadow. Cast shadow. So well, without going into too much effect we'll push that a little bit in shadow. <clears throat> So we can understand then that we, if we, if we touched our finger in through here, this turn would be pretty deep because it's so dark so quick and the edge and the contrast is so strong that this turning here underneath would really turn under quite strongly, uh, quite quickly. And that we know that this would be a very deep crevasse, very quick, very steep kind of under turn. That's important to know, I think, too, as you're, as you're seeing what we see with the ear forms and shapes, but also knowing where what, what goes on with the shadows, what's happening with the depth in the crevasse nature, cave-like nature of some of, these, some of these forms. And through here, so this will come over and through here. We'll get that going. Just to clean up that a little bit. So now we can say, come up here and we're almost kind of there. <clears throat> As we come up and through here. So let's kind of throw all this right now in a little underneath kind of contouring tone for now. We'll see that. We have that in through here and then over this kind of, again, flattens out a little bit. So we see that. And so now we got to clean this up a little bit, get this form in here and this feeling of it, even though it's in shadow. So we have this Y shape coming over, and it's a little stronger and darker through here. And we see it kind of turn over, turn over this anti-helix and come through here, turn back and around, and kind of bulb underneath like so. That's an interesting form in there. <clears throat> And then we can start to see a little light penetrating right in through here, coming from the back on the other side. And she's lit kind of from the top and slightly back underneath the, the top part of the helix. So we get a little bit of light, just barely showing it through there. <clears throat> we'll firm up this helix turn in through here, this fold. This comes over now, around. <clears throat> Coming over through here, this kind of flat, all this flattens out a little bit. Then it raises up. Can you see that raise up a little bit? Can you feel that? That's tough to draw because it's in shadow, but you're drawing these forms in shadow and through here. And this is where it tops out and shows the light. This area right in through here. So this is the most lit part. And then because the other parts are in shadow, 
it starts to turn away from us. And that's why we contour it back into the helix fold underneath that. And so your ear, your finger could go underneath that pretty, pretty good for a good, good fold underneath. That's why it's important to get into there and clean this material and bacteria over time will get dirt and whatnot. <clears throat> so we have that. So we're just about kind of finished up and in, in through here. I'm going to make this a little, a little darker underneath it here. This kind of underturns away from it. That's why it gets so dark in there. Right in through here, you can kind of see this get darker, and we'll put a little tone. Like so. <clears throat> And then over to here, this folds up a little bit, and then we come back to another slight crevasse in through here. And of course, this is where it straightens out just a little, coming, coming down. <clears throat> and it gets a little darker in through here. We can soften that up, kind of under turns and gets darker. We're not going to go for a full value finish. I'm almost done here for where I want to go with it. <clears throat> and a little bit darker as we turn in through here. This is kind of a raised up ridge and then it falls underneath, comes, really falls in through here and it's really darkest and deep where it falls deeply. Through here, and of course in through, through that area as well. So we've got all the parts, relevant parts, and I'm just gonna clean up the drawing. I'll add a little light here in a moment. And so we took this ear from its direct observational shape and we noticed that the angle of the ear was pretty straight in this one. It wasn't lobe forward or lobe first, but it was actually about equal. That is not always the case. It's actually more rare. So it was good for me to show that one. I want to pick that one that out to, to show you so that there are exceptions to these, to these kinds of observational rules and things that we see. Just cleaning up the drawing a little bit here. Let's get a little bit darker in the auditory canal here. The meatus, external meatus. Look how it's really deep and it's very hidden, it's very protected, and it's funneled. Everything, all this is there to draw and direct sound waves into the ear canal to get it to get it in there so that we can process sound to the brain and be aware of what we are, our surroundings are, whether we're in a beautiful concert or we're in a construction zone or, or uh, you know, some points in between, alarmed, uh, aware of danger, all those things. It's so important to, to be aware of. A little bit more on the lobe here. Let's turn this around and over. important to see and through there that this see how square she gets now I know this is teared up and around but see how square the side of it is right where the shadow is it really turns down right and over and through here and then we have the auditory canal go a little bit a little bit darker and through here so, but it's also soft so it's a soft transition and it's kind of square so it it can confuse you confuse you a little bit if you're not quite used to it so this can be a little bit more canaled right in through here and then over canaled more carved out a little bit really kind of oval rounded and then ends in through here you can see where that's darker go a little bit darker through here There we go. <clears throat> now it's just kind of refreshing the drawing, touching it up a little bit. <clears throat> this academic style that I'm using. Just 
just a little bit more ridging in through there, that'll be enough. Let's put a little line on it and we'll go on to our next anatomical study. So just a little bit of light, light sources from above a little bit. We know that because it's lit up here some, but it's also facing us a little bit inside the ear. So <clears throat> the, you can tell by the way it's lit what the form is also doing. So we know understand that this is a ridge across here, so we can get that to canal. We could contour it a little bit too. This would come canal like this, or come over the cylinder, like so, right? We see that, and then around and ridge. And then we get a little bit of light here on the back side a little, right? We see that. Open that up a little bit, and it gets more full in through here. This can curve over like so. We see that. Curving, curving, curling and curving. And then the lobe is pretty uh, opened in light and, and to here. Along the ridge of the antitragus, we'll put a little light in through here, underneath in between the two of them. And then we can get a little bit of tone coming on the lobe itself, the flatter plane of it. This will turn and go this way. Coming over here a little bit, and then get a little richer, maybe back in the antitragus area, right through there. That might be enough, and maybe a little bit more of the head turn here and through. And then on the, the end of the tragus in theory, it really gets ridged and protected. Let me put a little bit more of this contouring value. Make sure you pull that in shadow. It's important the shadows down away from us. It's pretty, pretty strongly firm cartilage. Pretty pretty um, uh, hard, real hard and firm, and that's really, really pretty firm, and this is all more, a bit more in shadow, as this turns in through here and around. Get this a little bit more accurate in through here. I'm not going for a full, complete value finish, but get a good feel for it. This might be a little long where I've drawn it. Probably is a little bit, but that's okay. I'm okay with it. I could bring it down a little bit. I'm all right with it. <clears throat> Cast shadow over here turning. Sometimes if you miss the shape a little bit, it doesn't if it's unless it's really important, I'm not that big of a stickler. Right in through here, this will get more light, you can see that in. You know the the contouring would feel like this coming around the ear. And you can kind of go for its length by the other way. And it's real light in here, isn't it? You get a little bit more light where the antihelix is. Coming out, bulbing over, curling over, right? And it falls back in a lot, so it's probably hottest and brightest about right there. <clears throat> and this ridge, and it kind of folds under the tone of the paper. So about right there, and then it folds back over, like so. And then a little light in through here to the Antitragus area on the outer ridge gets a little bit more light in through there. And then downward it fades, fades to the paper a little bit. Then I think we're just about there. So there we go, there's our first one. So we put all those parts together. Now that you know the terminology of what you really need, um, there are other things, but uh, I'll leave it up to you to study those. But I gave you what's what is most relevant uh, and I think salient to our experience with drawing anatomy in the ear. I'll put a little bit of bottom where there's a shadow of the ear just to get that located. And a little bit more where the hair would be right in through here. <clears throat> All right, so there's, there's a little hair there. Little hair there. Let's go on now to the next one and see what we can do with this one. We'll have some very distinct different different poses. Okay, let's go on now to that one. Structure all all parts of the human form of 3D. All parts when it comes down to it. So okay, let's now go on to our next uh, ear study, if we will. All right, so now the next image that we have is a much different view. So what I've done here is I've put up an image where there's been some corrective ear surgery. 
and you can notice that the image on the right is corrective from the ear ears on the left of this young young boy now you can debate about whether that's appropriate or not and it's really up to the 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 uh, aesthetic of the person having the surgery but you can tell that the the difference is pretty obvious and what we're looking at is we're going to be drawing the ears or the one of the ears on the left side of this of this young boy and to see what the ear is done naturally but also what it looks like from the back and then it's in its natural position that is outward and not and not tucked in so this child must have felt like the ears were pretty far out and it just was uncomfortable socially I suppose um, and then they had the surgery but I, I want to look at the from the ear anatomy standpoint of uh, the ear uh, on the outer edge which we don't get to see as much especially in this ear that's extended uh, outward so let's go ahead and draw this ear from the back we're gonna I'm gonna be drawing the right on the right side and just we'll do one because I want to do a different position to finish out this study page of studies over here so um, what you notice is you've got a little bit of that head now coming coming through here where the hair is over through here and let's capture that ear. We can start to see that it, how it attaches to the back of the head a little bit. We'll start to work that shape now of the of the ear, kind of a question mark shape. We're doing the right right ear here, and we always want to remember that it's remember it's kind of located in that box. So it's kind of that remember that box. The first part of ear anatomy one um, has that look to it. So here's the actual kind of top of that right. So as we come down now, notice that it's, it's got a really strong tilt. It's really separated from the, the head. It's got a strong tilt coming this way, and then of course it starts to arch down and, and over this way too as well, and then comes through. And then we see we can get the, the hairline is in through here. Pretty, pretty tight hair there, pretty shaved, or at least cleaned up. And then uh, we have the neckline here with the neck comes through and then downward we see that and of course the lobe is going to come uh, behind that and since we're in the back and then attach somewhere up up and through here but it ends obviously right through there so we've got that kind of basic form sh uh, shape if you will of the ear and then we can start to turn this into a little bit more of, of three-dimensional so we're working with the pinna right but we're working with the pinna in the back the outer ear but the back part of the outer ear, and we start to can tighten up some of this line work a little bit and through here as it attaches. <clears throat> Got that. And now we start to see the helix now from the other side that it comes down. Now, if this were a, a true box with a 90 degree, here's where that strong turn is. So I'll mark it in the beginning, but you can see naturally here that it wants to turn contour, right? Contouring here, and then where you see the shadow about right, obviously right in through here, right in through here. That's the strongest turn of that ear, and that's a great example now of the ear as a three-dimensional object um, and turning in it, in and on itself the helix part down in through here, this ridged part underneath through through here, right? So we'll get this outer edge a little tighter now, kind of make it conform a little bit to it's more kind of organic look it kind of curls in through here running through here and this is where the anti-helix is back in through here and we're just coming around the helix now down and through little ridge in through here little humps out a little bit and then it comes down and tightens up running through here <clears throat> so we've got that and it curls around to the lobe or lobule area and kind of balls in. Of course, it's going to attach behind his his uh, head there, behind the neck in the front there. Of course, the front side of the head. So this will get a stronger, stronger line through there. So we have that. So now we're going to come and define this a little bit further. So this again, <clears throat> draw this hair out a little bit further here. Uh, starts to ridge up. This humps over just a little bit. Then it kind of undercuts. This really turns now, do you see that? And it ends its turn, it's like a falling block, even though it's curved, so it's cylindrical and blocky like it really falls 
downward. So these contouring lines I'm making are important to tell me and to tell my audience, the viewer, you guys, and uh, whoever else, that this is a curved top surface. We have a light source, you know, very light. It's, it's uh, uh, diffuse kind of lining, but the light source is really coming, kind of coming from here all over a little bit. But it's not strong because there's other reflective light out over out over in here too as well. But there's enough of one powerful light source, generally from the top, a little bit from the right side because we have a shadow on the left to tell us still a story that this is moving in, in this direction and around, of course. And it gets really turned here. And we start to see that. So as we come back over here now, we can see now through the helix as it gets folds underneath the anti-helix part is back going through here now it's a lot more blunt you can kind of see where it makes a subtle perhaps a subtle Y shape right in through here where the shadow is right in through here so we can tone down that shadow right in through here just kind of group it all together for now in our study in through here this comes down and of course it makes its apex of its turn obviously right in through here so this is where the core shadow would be we could put a little bit if we want work a little black pencil in through here to put that core i don't want to go for a full-on value study so we can save a little time but we'll go a little little bit further here to show that that distance and that contouring that you get around there. And that's important to show contour around while you're shading if you're just sketching. Later on if you get all your values to work really well nicely for you, you don't have to contour. But in this case, since we're shorthanding it, what that means is I'm just quick sketching this for diagrammatical purposes and through here. And this is pretty, again, pretty firm material that we're drawing. This is firm cartilage and of course it gets softer down at the lobule or lobe area. Alright, so we're turning over here, turning. I'm going to recapture my contour lines a little bit. This gets a little bit, you can tell it kind of balls up here a little bit, more like a bean shape. Run under here, so he squeeze a little bit where he's got this extra part of his ear right in through there. In and then down. So we have the helix area, the pinna for sure, all over, the lobule or lobe area down in through here, right? Then we're working the anti helix. Now we're on the outer shell in the back behind the ear. So that's what's, you know, major, major exciting difference here. And so there's kind of a Y shape implied in through here with the shading a little bit, the shadow in through here. Now this is where it curves out. So this comes down and over, right, like a box through here. Then we start to come up where we see the light in through here. And um, what we see now is this stronger part where the worlds and vortices are really emerge where it attaches to the head, where the lobe comes up, comes back over and meets up over here with the attachment back to the skull or the skin on the side of the head right in through here. And this is very much kind of a curved surface uh, over here for sure, <clears throat> right in through here. And so this curves not only under lot like a cylinder, but it's moving contouring. You see how my contouring is this way and then it turns this way. So it's really turning underneath uh, here as well. And it really starts to make a dive into back the to the front of the ear about right in through here where it gets stronger shaded right in through here then it has kind of a ridge here up capture that line and then another ridge and I'm just drawing what I mostly what I see now of this underneath part of the back of the lobe in through here and so we have this coming down and curling in <clears throat> And we'll get this hair. Just kind of finish this out a little bit darker. This is hair and through here, hair coming down. And then cut over a little bit. And through there. <clears throat> so this whole area right in through here 
starting about where the heat the anti-helix is is really kind of an over turned uh, cylinder isn't it so from really right over in here coming on down the ear as we see it and coming this way all of this see how this overturns really turning in and um, overturning so the under part of the ear over here is inverted and so funneling everything back into the uh, ear canal or the external auditory um, hiatus, if you will, of the of this young boy's ear in the back. So what you get is a lot of separation. The reason why his ears are so wide, you can you can judge it against what was on the uh, uh, on the right side of the what we call quote unquote the correction, which is I'm not sure that's even the right word to say, but the adjustment to his look is that it is now much closer to the head so we don't have all this space in between quite frankly it's not as a an exaggerated kind of look and that's probably why they they wanted to take it out if you go back um, those of you that are american or from the states you know uh, norman rockwell his paintings of American nostalgia in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. A lot of his men uh, and boys that he painted of that time had this look, this kind of look of the ears, which made it really kind of uh, the, the innocent and look kind of naive looking, which was kind of the general stereotype of the time, even though that was during World War II and Korean, Korean War. So we were fully adulterated as a, as a culture. I don't want to go into politics here, but but you get the idea that the point being out of all of this is that it's a certain kind of look and it has a very boyish look to it. Maybe it's charming, maybe it's not depending on the beholder of the ear type, but it is a certain kind of ear type. Now, so what I'm doing is just rendering around now this, this cylinder a little bit further to get a feel for the dynamics of this ear, how this ear top was kind of a box over here, top of a box like this, and then coming down, right? And then this part right in through here is kind of an uh, inverted over cylinder, if you will, kind of like this, and everything kind of comes around it or turns around. It's really important to kind of see that. Um, so, as you're drawing a form, I guess the point being is that it can have multiple variations of different uh, simplified forms. I think that's pretty uh, unique and interesting to drawing in, in sculpture, is that you can conceive of many different forms. So this curls around, continues to curl around. This is fairly ridged in here. And as we come down to the bottom, it's important to note that as I'm shading this down, this is all in shadow, but this underneath current turning through here <clears throat> is the end of the lobe. So about right in through here, this whole area is softer fatty, fat fibro fatty tissue. And this is all more cartilage. And so we've got to come down here. This, we've got to continue to create this stronger ridge right in through here. And then in this cylinder, I'm going to have to go darker as this turns in here, right? So we see all this material, shaded material, right in through here, coming underneath and down the under turn of this cylinder. It should be actually turned about like this would be better, more appropriate kind of activity. So I'm turning, if you can understand it, I'm turning down that way uh, to the to the ear. And this kind of turns underneath, so I'll get a little bit more into here. Really kind of turn it further. <clears throat> and this is fairly soft transitions in through here, so we can turn this over, turn this over, <clears throat> turn this over, contour this, cross contour this, make sure this comes over nice and 
and we're cleaning through here. Well, <clears throat> so much more interesting, I think, unique and different view of the ear than we get from more, you know, kind of typical views. But yeah, I picked this view to show you how uh, formed and three dimensional these these ears are. In just about any view. In through here, and then a final turn in through here. Just keep on turning this, turning this, turning this, turning it around. And then final, finally, we'll punch it with a little bit more dark down in, down in through here. And then around. And that gives you that rounded touch. And let's throw this a little bit more shadow. It's kind of, can you see these little nobule areas? They're kind of like little beads, flat little fleshy beads. We'll get that a little bit here. And also maybe kind of been through here. This one's a little bit smaller, a little bit more lateral coming down. And this where this ends right in through here. <clears throat> And this, this is a real strong kind of under turn, and then it ends abruptly. That's why there's a little bit stronger edge right here, and then there's a value shift from darker uh, light form shadow into a, a, a lighter or a lighter area right in through here. So this, we can get this little, little extra lobe or back kind of bump, hump, if you will, back in through here. And end it with some contour, and I'll end this as this turns to get that feeling of that turn around, contouring here, depending on your style, just diagrammatic here. And continue to turn this. This turns over now. We're on the top of this box, like so. So this is what I'm seeing it as. The side over here is over here, and as we come over the top ridge. Right in through here, bingo, we turn over, and now we're at the top of the box. So this is a curved kind of attitude or, or a feeling to the, the form itself. So more contouring around, like so. So that's important to see, to note, I think. Okay. A little bit more down in through here and kind of finish this off. Maybe you can add a little bit of light. Maybe I'll add more light than what's there. Push that neck. It's a pretty soft image to work from, so we can push the the contour and excuse me, the contrast uh, a little bit more just to make it more spicy, if you will, or just a, a more volumetric study through here. All right, so that's probably enough. I'll come back and catch some of this line in through here. Ridge this out, this line, a little bit for the lobe. And your contour line and value can work really nicely together. Put that on the ear, kind of coming down. So look how far out that's extended uh, from the the side of the head and through here. <clears throat> All right, let's put a little bit of light on it. And sometimes again, I'll kind of create a, a little stronger light than that's there. And sometimes to not mix the white too much, I'll take my eraser and wherever I'm gonna put that white at, I'll start to erase out a little bit. So it's a little bit smooth in there. I'll hit the top here a little bit for light effects, and maybe right there would be plenty since we're top lit a little bit from the from the right coming through. Clean this up a little bit. Okay, and then we'll hit a little bit of light. So you know, two ways I hit light. So just thinking about the light source up here, right? And it comes down like my, my arrows. There goes my broken pencil. I'll keep talking as I as I sharpen. Um, you always want to keep in mind where your light source is at at all times. I know that seems like a lot to think about, but it's really not hard. And 
it just just uh, takes a little bit of practice to keep keep in mind to be cognizant of where it's at, and then um, you just kind of get it, and it and it doesn't matter really anymore. Um, you just see the shadow shapes, and you're like, "There's my light source," and you kind of just go with it. Um, and so that's that's kind of the situation as you're working. And of course, it wouldn't be one of my teaching demos if I didn't break lead. So I thought, well, I just won't even cut. And I'll just sharpen a little bit and go with it. All right, back to it. So we've got our light source uh, here. Now I'll show the arrow coming down, kind of moving in this, this direction. And so I'll kind of come across the form this way, kind of run the, the feeling of it. And then there are times when I'll cross contour and I'll make a little, these little quick little contouring little lines, kind of like scissoring lines, saw lines, just to get that feel of it coming down and maybe a little little extra right in through here to show a highlight just to kind of get that feeling of it and then let it fade to the paper right in through there and let it go. So that's where the lightest of the of the high the light's gonna hit. And then I'll put a little bit in through here. Contour that to lighten that up a little bit to show that. And then maybe just a little bit in through here to show a little bit more but everything is top lit and it's very logical in this sense because we've got a light source coming from the top and essentially we're hitting the top of this box this is like the top of the box so the top of the box is lit and then the side of the box is in shadow since it's moving away from the light right in through there so there's the top of the box right here's the side of the box of our ear. Here's the curve of it and of course this is lit more at the top. That's really important to, to note and to have in your mind. Just takes a little practice and you start to get the idea of where your light source is at all times and you just kind of you just make a mental note of it as you're drawing and you just kind of you kind of get on with it and you have it. I'm gonna go a little bit further here. Some mid-tone value it's a little bit darker right in through here, and it's kind of redder. It's just have I have a red color, so it work, would work out. But I'm contouring it mostly in this direction to emphasize this cylindrical kind of turning here as well. And then I might go cross contour just to get a little bit more value. So that gets it darker for me. But the main thrust is top to bottom right in through there. So cross contour just to add a little bit extra dark in through there. I think that works. Starts to give me what I need. I'm going to take that light down a little bit there and a little bit dark in through here. So I think we're about ready now to go on to our next ear study. This will be the last one and this will be a little bit more unique, unique pose too as well. Looking from the top kind of behind a little bit to get the last run because most of you will see these ears and that will get taken care of but sometimes you don't see these as much and you need to you want to know about uh, some interesting or different or unique views okay all right so let's go on now to that to our last ear study in our ear anatomy with living anatomy and let's see how let's see how we do all right Okay, so for the last year in uh, our Living Anatomy series here, more, more unusual viewpoint. Now we've got a top view of the ears. If you're uh, uh, taller than somebody looking down on the ear and slightly from profile back, about three quarters back and on top. So the ear gets skewed a little bit. So one way we can think about this ear, I'll draw it uh, down here a little bit. Let me pull out just a little bit of camera view. There we go, and I'll pull back in, is that, again, if you can start to think of this as a box, we can see that this top of this ear, it's a rectangular box, we see it like this, okay? And we can cut off the back of the ear, so this is the front, this is the back, and then coming down, it's slightly in three-point perspective here, and then we see it tapered here, and then coming down like this, and then we tighten it up here, and then tighten it up here, right? And then the ear 
fits into that box quite nicely. So when then we could see the helix part coming around here a little bit over, and then we find it's it's true kind of kind of shape to the lobe and through here right and over. And this wants to come back on in, come on up, etc. And we've we've kind of we've kind of got it. So that's how that's how I think you can you can begin to again think about these parts of the ear to put it into into that box like structure. So let me adjust here and we'll we can I think get the whole thing into into here. Let's tape it down a little bit and I think we're ready to go. So let's tackle this this last ear study a little bit more a, a different position. We've got a you know four or five four or five uh, positions going. Um, <clears throat> so let's do just that. Let's draw kind of a beginning sort of feeling box to that, right? And let's see what that feels like to compose it here. Make sure I'm in the camera all the way. Yeah, we're all the way there. And so this ear gets pretty short, pretty quick after the top, because we're closer to the top and we're looking down on the ear. And it gets pretty squeezed pretty quickly, meaning that the perspective gets squeezed down. Coming in through here and about there, okay. And then we'll come down a little bit here. We need a little bit more of this side to show in our box, so we have to pull this over a little bit, like so. So the box is just a, a helper, basically a volumetric kind of feeling to it. So we have the end of the of our box there. So now I think we're ready for our ear. And you notice how how large the helix is, and then. It gets smaller as it comes down to, to the lobe as well. So we'll start up at the top here with the helix. It wants to curve down and kind of in. There's a lot of hair there in through here. It's actually my old ugly ear, by the way. And all my gray hair, I didn't shave either. So, oh well, deal with it. <laughs> so we have uh, the helix here coming over, turning over here like so. And then we get that nice, rich, kind of cylindrical tube curve, and now it starts to curve off that box. So the box is just our helper. And then we come over to the end on the outside and through here, feeling it around, pointing out through here a little bit further down, like here, about right there, a little wider. And you come outside the box. The box, the box is a helper, and that's it. You don't have to conform all the way to it. What you want to conform to is what you're, you're drawing. So I'm getting the kind of the outside form of all this. We're coming on down and then kind of tightening up as I go. In through here, it kind of cuts in to where the lobe starts. The lobe overlaps a little bit, the lobule area. And then this curls kind of lips out like a tongue. It gets a little wider to about right there. And then it wants to turn and kind of come back on in. And then mine seem to want to attach about right there, where I make a little bit stronger mark with my pencil running through there as we're, as we're working the ear. <clears throat> so we have that. And then this lobe wants to curl up a little bit and keep on coming up to the curl ball and then kind of the uh, anti-tragus uh, area and the uh, tragus area and through which we'll start up in through here. So now my move, my next move is to come up and sort of feel the tube-like quality of the helix, really see how strong it is. So if I can, you know, contour some lines. And we have, again, you can start to see, think about the light source. It's coming from the top, kind of center. You can see the highlight running through here. So it's coming up somewhere up here and then hitting down onto the object. I think I took that in my office where I make make these videos right in through here. So we're feeling this tube, right, coming around. So I'm going to contour that just to show you what I'm thinking. And then we're going to come over here and start to find its outer defined edge. See how it falls down and then starts to want to curl in through here, kick back up, over and through here. It's kind of an S-curve this way, this way, right, and then that way. So this way, right, and then that way, coming through, and then this wants to curl back again, just a little bit, and then start to kind of, I wouldn't say straighten out, but start to get a little bit more uh, flat or somewhat, running through here, down, and then it starts to want to curve about here. See how we're still on the top of our box? This is curling over, so it's a box now that's curled, curling, curling 
curling through and underneath here and then of course it really ridges and turns underneath here right where you've got some shadow going and then some more shadow coming into here we'll get to the anti-helix in a little bit right in through later on right in through here as long as you keep that box idea like we talked about in ear anatomy the first part you're going to be okay with just about any view if you can see that relationship so we come down the helix over through here and it starts to turn in a little bit and narrow now this is the, again the kind of the top side of it and it's turning this this way and almost where it folds here it really really wants to turn see look how that that's how I'm reading that cylinder part of it. Of course, it's darker back here. Go a little bit darker line. Right in through here, and you've got some sh you know, shadow in through here, but it really turns. Then it turns over about right there. It's kind of a straighter line, and then the top of it kind of comes over in the feeling of that, of that ear. So we have that, right, and then we have the other part of the helix coming on down and under here. And then it starts to get more distorted in perspective and start to shorten up a little bit. And then this turns like so. It's basically a two, isn't it? So we have kind of the end of the helix before we get to the lobe part in through here. And this wants to under turn like that the most part like so and it kind of fade and it's, it's a little, slightly blurry but it, it just bec partly because it's not as much definition it's a little bit more blunt and then back up here so we get to the anti-tragus and then of course onto the tragus now there's uh, behind the ear here you know it, it turns it keeps on turning right it turns in itself kind of like this down here right over and through here even though it's at the bottom I can't I want to move the camera but it turns underneath. Of course, you see the shadow back here where it's separated from the head a little bit. It's not attached directly to it. We've got, obviously, got separation, as you know. Everybody knows their anatomy, their ear, it's pretty much, and until you draw, it's a little bit different experience. There we go. So we have that. So we're coming through. Now we're going to go for the anti helix over here, and the, and the other part of the helix as this starts to turn underneath here so all this now is cupping and turning really quickly and going back up into back into the ear isn't it it's turning in through here so it gets bring this down a little more and up and through right to about there and then the anti-helix starts about right here coming on down so this comes over and we have that move movement. And then we have the anti-helix here on down through and over. And that Y shape, you can see it a little bit. It's kind of covered up by the helix coming on down here, but about about right in through here. It's pretty, pretty blunt, flat. And then this turns, this wants to turn this way now with the ear. And we see that other part here. And you see now the separation between the anti-helix and the helix in this ear. It gets stronger as it turns here. Not, they're not as close, but now there's some space in between here. We see that. All right, we see that moving in between more space and shadow. We see that. There is that crevasse or that canal between the two. And it's more lit now since the lighting is kind of getting inside there a little bit. And so we go down to this anti-helix through here and it's kind of sausagey as it turns and then it overturns itself here on this side and then it kind of gets into the anti tragus or whorls and vortices through here and then the anti tragus as it kind of comes up and in and then around like so and this wants to curl up and kind of curl over Okay, little folds of skin here on the side of the head, right, right into here, right into here a little bit. I'm going to strengthen that up a little. And then we have <clears throat> now the opening of the 
uh, area, the tragus, coming through here a little bit. I'll shave this down. This wants to come back in, and then part of this, like really strongly here, you can see it more in shadow, obviously. And then this part wants to keep on coming down, and of course we get into hair over here. I'll demarcate that a little strongly. Now we get into the area where we get closer to the external auditory meatus or the ear canal, the outer area. Remember the whole thing is the pinna, and then we get this little stronger hood over it, and then we get to the tragus right here, that curve over, really strong cartilagey area, then it curls. It's hard to see here, but it curls pretty, actually more back here, kind of gets overlapped right in through there. So it's a real strong kind of perspective, and it's a little distorted because of the three-point perspective and the lens, but that's cool. So we see that little distortion, how it gets squeezed down a little bit and these some contouring in there and then what we have we don't see the ear canal outer part of it as it goes into the the middle ear and off see back into the bone part and then the skull part but what we do see is a strong shadow so we know that the light source is coming out here top a little bit let me see you can see that in the camera just barely yeah and then of course it's coming down and down and down and also over here and so what that creates is is that and also over over here I can't believe I didn't break my pencil yay is that the lights hitting here this ridge is over just a little bit that turn it's really important to kind of mimic the turns of the form with your pencil and you can kind of see how I do that it's turning and turning. It's kind of turning on in here. And that's why I use contour, a real obvious contour lines with these diagrams so you can kind of see it. And then the what's happening is, is that this area, this line demarcates the cast shadow of this whole area being hooded means that this is more hollow. And so all this is pushed back now. In, in shadow in the deeper closer we get to this inner area here the, the little darker it gets in shadow so I can use my black pencil a little bit we'll, we'll start to demarcate this a little bit more <clears throat> along this edge, demarcate some of these edges back to the tragus and the anti-tragus and through here. <clears throat> and then we have a little bit of <clears throat> uh, secondary cast shadow in through here because we have multiple light sources into here and then this little whorls and vortices this is a soft transitional turn so it's not as pronounced with its edge but then it gets a little bit more of a ridge here bulbs over and then these turn through here to the anti-helix really turning I'll show you the contour line see that turning through and then it changes kind of direction and it goes this way and it narrows up more so I can turn this narrow this up a little bit and through here it's kind of like a worm or a tornado you know leg or arm of a tornado more like a worm or a branch or just some kind of cylinder running through there <clears throat> and so we pretty much got most of the parts that we need I'll add a little dark now underneath this shadowing in through here that's the strongest part away from the light or the darkest part away from the line, so we're turning underneath here a little bit further, and this flattens out a little bit so it's not as dark. I'll contour it across here a little bit so you can see that a little bit more. I'm just shorthand kind of contouring that I'm doing through here, and then we're turning through. That covers up and over. 
and around. And then we get the helix. See here where the hair is. So it's hard to see. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably a little long into here. I don't care. Either all these I'm a little bit longer, and some ears shorter, and some ears and relatively in the ballpark. You'll notice that a lot of times. You'll, you might miss a lot. Even I do it. I don't care. It's okay as long as I'm close to it. You can get away with that a little bit. Sometimes in parts of the body you can't. You have to be careful. But these are so abstract in some ways. It's kind of like drawing sea urchins or snails in it, isn't it? In some ways. So a little darker underneath there. Really push it right through there where that's really hooded. It curls over nice and strongly. We'll put a little dark there. Capture this over this turn here where it's a little darker. Go a little softer. And then back in through here. And this could come out. This bulges here. And then I'm going to. This comes back over and then bulges out a little bit more. A little softer. Move towards the lobe. This does overlap and curls back a little bit. Very sausagey, the ears. Kind of like the lips in that sense. This is a little. I think we're just about just about there. Enough for the study into here, I think. I'll add a little bit of little bit of light to it, maybe a little bit of darker along here. Okay, and let's see. So light source coming from above here. You can see the nice highlight here. Pretty glossy on there, a little oily on the ear, so a little bit more glossy highlight in through there. And then <clears throat> let's see, let's add that. So about right in through here, I'll start to gingerly add my highlights, ease into it, and maybe contour it a little bit where it's stronger to the cylindrical quality of it, like so. And then maybe add a little final touch right in through there. Maybe keep on going just a little bit for effect. And then it's a little light in through here, isn't it? Catches a little bit, not much. And then this gets lighter, so this kind of patches around. Pull that through just a little bit. And then maybe some right here. Not too bright. Here's the hottest highlight, so maybe one more approach to it. Make sure it gets the dominance it, it needs to have right in through there. Maybe a touch here. And here on the lobes. Lobe here, as well as maybe here, coming downward a little bit. And that's probably enough. So I think we've got everything now we need to finish out our ear study and here tighten up this line. Take it from a light touch to a hard, darker, heavy touch right where there is more shadow and hair coming through. And I think that'll that'll get us. So let's pull out a little bit here. <clears throat> now we've got a study of ears and in many different directions. So you know, going through that will teach you quite a bit. Keep keep drawing. And keep thinking about the ears as a box form, a rectangular box, and then a cut out of a C shape or a question mark shape, and then where is its sides, its top, front, left, and right, its back at times, and then start to pinpoint those areas out. The whole thing is the pinna, then we have the helix, right? The anti-helix, the lobule, the auditory canal or external auditory meatus, we have the tragus, right, and the antitragus. Tragus, anti-tragus, and then really the rest of it is whorls, vortices, recesses, and whatnot. Even though they have proper names in terms of just drawing, I, I don't need you to know them unless you want to, and then you're welcome to go to town and, and go crazy on them. All right, so that concludes ear anatomy. Um, that's it. You guys take care out there and keep on drawing, and I'll see you soon with more... Um, more lessons. You guys take care. Bye-bye.